Hello and welcome to my YouTube channel called Statistics from A to Z, Confusing Concepts Clarified. These videos are based on content from my book of the same name, which is published by Wiley. For more information on the book and these videos, please visit statisticsfromatoz.com. This is the 11th video in my playlist on regression. It is called Design of Experiments, DOE, Part 2 of 3. Previously, I had uploaded these other 10 videos on regression. There were two videos on correlation and covariance, five videos on regression, one video comparing ANOVA to regression, and one on residuals, which are the errors in regression model, and the first of three on design of experiments. DOE is the discipline used to validate regression models. Since this is part, since this part, part two video builds on the part one video, let's review the keys to understanding from part one. Those keys summarize what we covered in that part one video. The first key to understanding from part one says, for process output y, which is a function of several fa factors, the x's, that is for y equal f of x1, x2, x dot 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 xn, design of experiments, or DOE, can design the most efficient and effective experiments to determine the values of the x's which produce the optimal value of y. Uh, KTU number two says, since designed experiments provide strong evidence of cause and effect, DOE can be used to validate or invalidate regression models. KTU number three says statistical software packages perform DOE calculations which help to specify the elements which make up the design. These elements are levels, combinations, replica replications, runs, and order. KTU number four says don't extrapolate. Whatever conclusions we make as a result of the experiment are only valid within the range of levels tested. And finally, KTU number five from DOE part one says, to start, identify all reasonably plausible factors. Okay, now let's go forward with this video, DOE part two of three. As usual in the book and in these videos, we'll start by going quickly through a list of keys to understanding, or KTUs, this will end with the overall picture of the concept on a single page. And then we'll go into detailed explanations of each of the keys. For this video, there are four KTUs. The first key to understanding says, the estimated effect of a factor x sub i is e sub i, which is the average of the y's in runs where x sub i was high, <clears throat> minus the average of the y's in runs, where x sub i was low. KTU number two says, the negative one and plus one coded level notation is more than just a shorthand. These values can be multiplied to provide a formula for the estimated effect of a factor or an interaction between factors. Key number three says, an interaction is present when the two levels of one factor react differently to a change in the level of another factor. The fourth and final key to understanding for this video says, to calculate the coded level of an interaction AB for a given run, multiply the coded level of A by the coded level of B. And here on one page are the four keys to understanding for DOE part two. You may wish to pause the video at this point and read them all together. Okay, now let's go back to the top and take a closer look at each of these four keys to understanding. Key to understanding number one says, the estimated effect of a factor x sub i is e sub i, where e sub i is the average of the y's and the runs where x sub i was high, 
minus the average of the y's in the runs where x sub i was low. Uh, this seems like a common sense way to do it. Y is the output variable. It is called the response. It is also called the response variable. The x variables are the inputs in the function y equals f of x1, x2, dot, 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 xn. We also call them the factors. There will be several of these factors which we will consider. Sometimes a, b, c, etc. are used instead of x1, x2, x3 to denote the factors. In a simple example of two levels low and high and three factors, x sub 1, x sub 2, and x sub 3, how many different combinations can we test? The answer is 2 to the power of 3, that is 8. So without repeating a combination, we can have eight experimental runs with eight results for y. First of all, I should note that the following explanation is for instructional purposes. You won't have to do these calculations manually. There is software to do that. In this example of an experimental design, looking at the leftmost column, we will run the experiment eight times. Runs are numbered number one through number eight. Next, we have three factors, that is three input variables, for each of the eight runs. These factors or inputs are usually labeled a, b, and c, or x sub one, x sub two, and x sub three. And there are two levels. Negative one represents the low level for each factor, and plus one represents the high level. We call these coded levels. These coded levels fill up columns two, three, and four on the left side of the table. And at the far right, we have the output variable y. y is also called the response. The measured value for y in each of the eight experimental runs is shown in the rightmost column. Remember from key number one, the estimated effect of a factor is the average value of y when the factor was at a high level minus the average value of y when the factor was at a low level. In this example, factor A, also shown here as x sub 1, was high and runs 2, 4, 6, and 8. So you can see plus 1's under the column for A in the rows 2, 4, 6, and 8. The average value of y in these runs when x sub i was high was y equals 10.25. Factor A, that is x sub 1, was low in runs 1, 3, 5, and 7. And you can see the negative ones under column A in the odd numbers row, odd numbered rows 1, 3, 5, and 7. The average value of y in these runs was 3.75. Therefore, the estimated effect E sub 1 of the factor x sub 1 is the value of y when x sub i was high, that is x equals 10.25, minus the value of y when x sub 1 was low, y equals 3.5. And therefore, the estimated effect, e sub 1, of the factor x sub 1 is 10.25 minus 3.5 equals 6.75. Likewise, the estimated effect of x sub 2 is 34, 35 divided by 4 minus 20 divided by 4 equals 3.75. And e sub 3 is 31 divided by 4 minus 24 divided by 4 equals 1.175. Uh, just a note on terminology. The estimated effect of individual factors, as opposed to uh, the interactions between factors, are called main effects. These are all main effects so far. We will discuss interactions later. KTU number 2 says, the negative 1 and positive 1 coded level notation is more than just a shorthand. These values can be multiplied to provide a formula for estimated effect of a factor or an interaction. For example, the level for factor x sub 1 was high and runs 2, 4, 6, and 8. So we multiply the y value for those runs by the plus 1s that are in the x sub 1 column for those rows. Adding those four positive numbers uh, get we get to get we have to get to get four. Then we divide by four to get the average of ten point two five. Similarly, x sub i was low in runs one, three, five, and seven. So we multiply those 
values by the negative ones, we total these negative numbers and get negative 14. Divide by 4 to get the average, which is negative 3.5. And the estimated effect is the sum of the average values when x sub i was high, that is 10.25, and the average when x sub 1 was low, that is negative 3.5, and we get 6.75. KTU number three says, an interaction is present when the two levels of a factor react differently to a change in the level of another factor. For example, let's say we are trying to maximize the cleanliness in a laundry process. Y is a numerical measure of cleanliness. Factor one, also known as A, is the detergent type. The levels are detergent number one and detergent number two. Factor number two, also known as B, is the brand of washing machine. The levels are brand P and brand Q. Factor 3, also known as C, is the amount of bleach added. These are levels are low and high. Factor 4, also known as D, is water temperature. The levels are low and high. Left diagram. It shows that detergent number 1 cleans better than detergent number 2. However, the brand of a washing machine makes no difference. So the two levels of detergent type react the same to the brand of a washing machine, they have no reaction at all to a change in the level of washing machine. Therefore, there is no interaction between x sub 1 and x sub 2. Note that the level can be a name, like the brand of a washing machine, or a number. In the center diagram, an increase in the level, uh, level of factor C, bleach, increases the value of Y by an equal amount for the two levels of detergent. There is no synergy or no canceling between bleach and detergent type. There is no interaction at all. Parallel lines indicate no interaction. Right diagram. On the other hand, cross lines, as shown in the right diagram, do indicate an interaction. One level, detergent number one of factor A, detergent type, reacts significantly stronger than the other level to a level change in factor D, which is water temperature. There is an interaction when the lines are crossed at substantially different angles, as in this diagram, the effect of the interaction is likely to be statistically significant. If the lines cross but are close to parallel, the interaction may not be statistically significant, and statistical software will tell us for sure which is the case. Keto understanding number four says, to calculate the coded level in a, of an interaction AB for a given run, multiply the coded level of A by the coded level of B. Performing these multiplications for all interactions, we get this table. As before, the top row of these tables show different naming conventions for each factor and in interaction. For example, AB and X sub 1, X sub 2 are two different names for the same reaction, same interaction. In this table, we add another row to show how the coded levels, level Cs, are denoted. For example, the name of coded levels for AB for any run will include C sub 1, 2. The name of the coded level for ABs in the Jth run will be of the form C sub 1, 2, J. And for example, C sub 1, 2, 8 equals plus 1. This table includes three different sets of information. The run column and the factors column, ABC, tell us how to set the inputs, that is the level of factors, for each run. This is the design of the experiment. We know this prior to running to the, the experiment. In this example, there is just one replication of the runs. Each run is to be performed in the order shown. The order of the runs is set by statistical software to ensure randomness. Calculated levels. We cannot set levels for interactions. The interaction columns are calculated from the factor columns. We could calculate them prior to the experiment, but that information is not useful without the y values which are measured during the experiment. Notation. It seems that for labeling interactions, the letter notation ABC is more common and maybe less confusing, confusing than using um, X's with subscripts. On the other hand, subscripts are useful in formulas that involve summation signs. And here we are using C's with subscripts to denote the coded levels, negative 1 or plus 1. Other publications use C's with subscripts to know the low estimate of effects instead of E's with sub subscripts as we do here.
we can use these coded levels in our formula to calculate the effect for each factor in each interaction. For example, factor AB, also known as x sub 1, x sub 2, has the coded level C sub 1, 2, J, where J goes from 1 to 8. Here's the formula for the effect of that factor. The result is negative 0 0.25. Other than 0, this is the smallest effector, effect a factor can have, so it is unlikely that it is statistically significant. The statistical software will, te will tell us for sure. Okay, that concludes our video on DOE Part 2. Here are the others in the playlist on regression. Coming next will be DOE Part 3. Those videos are on my YouTube channel, Statistics from A to Z, Confusing Concepts Clarified. More are planned. See the videos page on my website, statisticsfromatoz.com, for the latest status of videos completed and planned.